Hiya, hiya. What happened to that storm in New York? I thought they were going to have a northeastern or a blizzard or something. I am from Buffalo. We are always dressed. I, I sleep in this. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget my sister being on the front page of the Buffalo News. My sister's a school crossing guard. And, you know, Buffalo had that big storm in, what was it, 88? It was the blizzard of all time. And it was like little Siberia. So my sister Anna, uh, she called me, she said, Joey, I'm on the front page of the paper. I made the front, I'm, I'm more famous than you. And I said, oh, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, what crime did you commit? No, no, no. She says, I'm crossing the school kids and they, they put me on the front page of the paper. So I get the paper and she has a mask on and a, a, a turtleneck, big overcoat, a fur hat, gloves, and I says, Anna, this could be Nanook of the North. This could be the abominable snowman. Nobody knows it's you. You can't tell who it is. <laughs> but you will be known by your works. That's the way, that's the that's Bible description. Well, a party shot for the Trump family. They're getting their uh, vaccine. You know, they're going to have a, a, well, the family is getting a, drop your pants. You're getting your, your parting shot. <laughs> Can you believe this guy? I mean, come on. Look, look at I got to tell you something. You know, I mean, you've been seeing me for a long time. You know, I have balls, right? I mean, but this guy, Trump, really has balls. He's got guayunis. He's a, he's got the big ones. I have never seen anything like it. Oh man, if you own all these properties, you know the recreation business that he's in. Why would you want to go to the White House and make that your sport? Go to your golf course, featuring golf and a spa, and uh, uh, they're adding a new uh, a new one in Palm Springs or Palm Beach. Is it Palm Beach? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the springs from the beach, but Palm Beach, Florida. They got the uh, Trump uh, properties there. Uh, they're they're adding waterboarding. It's going to be very very big. You know, I understand. It's formerly uh, the Bush Pleasure Garden. I guess we all forgot about that, didn't we? See, once you do something and it's and it doesn't work or it's bad or we we're for, very forgiving in this country, but this one here, I mean, uh, uh, Trump is, is most people have a secret Santa. This guy's got a secret service. He's going to have them the rest of his life. I don't know what what's going on. You know, nobody wants to make fun of him because then there's so many people who like him and think what he's doing is just terrific. They think he's patriotic. They think a lot of things. You know. That's why gun sales are up, and they're, they're, we're out of ammunition in this country. If we could only be out of ammunition with our tongues on talk radio, we'd be doing a lot better. If we would be out of Rush Limbaugh and, uh, and Sean Hannity, you know, these guys, are making, they made a career out of someone else's life. I mean, how, why not, how do you live your own life through someone else? It's parasitical. And I, I, if I thought that I had to live my life through someone else, then I wouldn't really have a life, would I? I'd be, I would be, but but I would have the pleasures of someone else. I'd have the money and the fame and the, and and the, I I all that is crap, you know. See, the fact of the matter is that we all nobody knows how they got here. Nobody chose to come to life. Nobody know knows. Uh, we didn't pick your religion. Didn't pick your parents. You didn't pick your heritage. You didn't pick your color. You didn't pick your size. You just came into the world. You didn't want to be here. Maybe you didn't know you didn't want to be here. You don't know how you got here. You don't know what you're supposed to do when you get here. You don't know what you're going to be when you get bigger, and you don't know when you're leaving. So if you don't know any of that, you become like Artie Lang on on laughing. If you are that old, remember that show? He used to sit there and smoke a cigarette and say. I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. I don't know how I got here, or where I'm going, or if I have all the money in the world, all the money. If I had billion dollars, like uh, certain people have, if I had all of the all of the fame, and you know, you saw my picture on Money and every place else that you could uh, really admire me. I think in the end, I still die. <laughs> and then what am I going to do? I mean, you know, am I going to? Uh, what have I done? <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> I could tell you the big, the most famous people in the world and the richest people in the world, they come to one conclusion. Uh, when it's over, you better, you better get off the stage. That's all. There's the exit over there. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Go. <laughs>
But, you know, some people hold on forever. They're like an abortion child in Buffalo. They're never going to let go. But I've gone through more changes than a drag queen, you know. So I, I don't know about life uh, as you do. i got my own life. You know, I'm not that popular. When I was a kid, I was never that popular. I was a fat kid, and I used to get beat up on the way home from school because uh, I, was, I, was, I was so big and, and fat that they used me for a third base when we played baseball. You know, nobody really cared about me, and, and I got ignored. And I decided that I was... When, my mother and father said that when you grow up, you're going to be nothing. <laughs> and you know what? I've lived up to their expectation. <laughs> I, have, I have made a career out of being not much. <laughs> and it's been fun. You know, I mean, it's fun to be nothing. Because then, you see, nobody sticks their nose in my food. I don't have anybody following me for autographs. I don't have anybody bothering me and wanting something I have. I mean, nobody wants what I have, so it's good. And uh, this is the way it's going to be in life for me, is that I'm going to get out of here uh, with a fairly simple funeral. Lucky I got six people to carry a coffin. That's why I'm going to be cremated. And then I'll have to rely on one person for the vase. <laughs> and I, knowing my ex-wife, she'll put me right next to the other pets. We're like Stephen King. we got a pet cemetery with all these animals that have died in this house. I blame her. <laughs> why not? <laughs> you got to blame somebody. But I'm just like a cockroach. You know, the light goes on, I go into the fridge. That's, uh, that's all it is, and that's how I'm able to, to get on with my life. How about you? What, 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 what are you going to do when you have the vaccine? <laughs> Thank God for these dealers. Boy, I'll tell you, we have had Wal Wal Walgreens. What do they have where health meets happiness or where BS meets greed? That's what <laughs> That's what it is. Anyway, it's a, it's a dead end on a cul-de-sac, just like the Reynolds wrap.